Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry. Today's video is my second look at the light update to the Mercurial Gauntlet where we got Lightroy up to level 50. I was able to clear this and I posted my team on the channel in the community tab yesterday. I did use a pretty bog standard team so to speak with Elisan, packing Leviathan for bog. Valentine's Ezolith as a burn bot and enabler of two elegant escort worm prints on my team, Natalie as my lead, and of course, Gala Cleo just to round up the team because she is such a powerhouse. So I didn't have to invest any stones to clear this gauntlet, other than the stones I'd put into my one copy of Shinobi to max unbind it that I planned to do anyway, since that was my only really good shadow dragon. And I did have to spend a lot of L's water and have to pay another big price though. So unfortunately, Eleonora is not the most powerful unit. And although one of my personal goals is to make the world's strongest Eleonora, right now that is a dream deferred because Eleonora had to sacrifice herself for me to get this gauntlet clear. And to be specific, I took off her strength augments. I put them on Natalie, and then I dismantled her bow just to get Twinkling Sand to manually craft three extra copies of Blackwing to bring Natalie's weapon up to Max Unbound. Now thankfully I was in a position where I could actually do that because I did have around 14 to 15 million rupees to spare, and I essentially spent all of those on this clear. I did spend some other things that ended up not being used in my clear runs. You know, I promoted my Alex, I took my Ieyasu up to 50 nodes, I bought the print Twinfold Bonds and took that up to level 100, max and bound it. So I spent a lot more resources than I would really get back from the gauntlet just for the satisfaction and the completionist mentality of getting this done. Now in my case, as a content creator, I'm happy to have gotten this done ahead of the anniversary since I'm sure there's going to be lots of things happening and it's one less thing for me to think about, but as a normal player of Dragalia Lost, I feel like this is a very crazy tactic and don't rush yourself when it comes to Mercurial Gauntlet. There are likely to be good banners to come that could help you with this. Every other Gauntlet level 50, we've had a relevant banner. So we had the Ramona and Reina banner. We also later on had a water summer banner with Summer Julieta, Summer Saliera, and Siren that would have helped with Flame 50. We then had an addition for Wind 50, or Water 50, but Wind Team is what I mean. We had the banner with Victor and Noelle. Now we recently got Emma, who can also help people who are stuck on wind. So don't spend more resources than you need to and that you're going to get out of this, unless, like me, you're just hellbent on finishing this as quickly as possible. Now thankfully my investment and Eleanor's sacrifice wasn't in vain, and it was still a while, at least 30 days or so, before I could max out her Wind Fafnir and her Bow Dojos. So I hope that in that time with the anniversary rewards and any ingots I pick up afterward, I will still plan to max out her weapon again. I'm just not needing it right now, and so for the time being, I was able to use my rupees to dismantle and power up my black wing. The upside to that is that I was thinking about doing that for a while anyway, just to get more sands to craft more weapons. So at this point, I was able to craft a light axe as well and a shadow sword. So my collection is almost rounded out. I'm still missing a couple of lances, a couple of blades, and a couple of wands, but those are really the only relevant five-star weapons that I'm missing. And I'm holding on to two max unbound weapons in the form of Cleo's wand, as well as Natalie's blade. So I don't know that I needed to push myself that far, but as somebody who only had Shinobi as my main powerhouse shadow dragon, that's what I decided to do. Ultimately, I kind of got stuck when it came to 47 onwards with Botan in my team comp, and especially the randomness of bleed because it only has an 80% chance to hit. But if you look at the chance that every bleed lands successfully in a whole match, 
that percentage is much lower. So I ended up replacing Botan with Elisan and had a Bog Dragon on her. In my case, a three times unbound Leviathan. I don't want to waste a stone for that final unbinding, although it is slightly less reliable. It's a little bit of RNG because Leviathan at three unbinds or fewer only has an 80% chance to bog, but at four unbinds has the max unbound has 100% chance. So there was a little bit of randomness in my clear. There was also a lot of synchronization of timing, if that makes sense. So Valentine's Ezolith and the Elegant Escort strategy is very powerful, but it's also very important that Valentine's Ezolith is burning the enemy in a time that is favorable to the damage your team is dealing. What I mean by that is if your damage is such that you're having the boss enter overdrive right after Valentine's Ezolith inflicts burn, it's very possible a lot of your skills are not even benefiting from Burning Punisher because the period is so short and by the time she gets it back, you know, you're already several seconds later into the quest. So in my successful clears, Burn was in really good rhythm with the pace of the fight with when I was casting my skills. So I almost want to say there's not a very clear prescription for how much skill haste or how to build Valentine's Ezolith, except to say put some skill damage on her and then maybe use your second print for something like the Prometheus Worm print with flame skill haste of 9%, maybe Jewels of the Sun with 8%. Or if she's just working as is with your team, you can use something like Evening of Luxury or Seaside Princess, which is what I ended up doing. Now, I did use kind of this standard tactics of clear, but a lot of commenters asked if I could do this without Gala Cleo. Personally, with my level of investment, I'm not confident I could, but there are clears out there that used Ieyasu instead of Natalie. There's clears that used Veronica instead of Gala Cleo. So it's something I'm actively trying to do, to try clear with my Veronica instead. But in my particular case, since my second best Shadow Dragon is a Juggernaut, and Veronica doesn't have the crazy amount of team utility of Galacleo, I'm likely to do a lot worse with my Veronica, even though I might be able to clear with a lucky run. So that's kind of the downside to Veronica, is you would want a good dragon to actually place on her since She's not really providing any team support, it's all about her own DPS. Gala Cleo, even if you have kind of a bad dragon on her, she's still very helpful to have in your team comp, and it's one of the reasons why I would suggest trying to pick her up when she's on focus. Obviously, her Gala has passed, and we don't know if she'd ever get a focus up again. Maybe they would include her in some type of anniversary dream summon, or maybe even a freebie, get any Gala, some type of thing like that. But for those who do lack her, if you happen to have Veronica, that is an alternative. You probably want one or the other, but remember, there could still be a really good shadow banner coming up after the anniversary. So my speculation is we might get a dragon with Bleeding Punisher at 5 star. We might get a 5 star dagger that has the ability to inflict bleed to kind of open things up and provide a good co-ability. And maybe we'll continue to get buff bots, like a 4 star shadow specific buff bot, and perhaps one that's a blade, since those are some of the weapon types that people are finding really need to be in their comp to take this fight down. Now there are still a lot more units that you can use. This has kind of been broken open, there's lots of clears on Twitter, on Reddit, so I encourage you to take a look if you are still struggling. One of the things I've reached out to the devs about through the feedback button in the game is basically to let us play earlier gauntlet levels because I would like to make some content around that and show 26 or 31, which are stumbling blocks for people, but I'm not able to go back and play those earlier gauntlet levels with a slightly weaker team to actually know just how hard it is. Anyway, that's pretty much going to do it for this video, everyone. I just wanted to show off the method that worked for me. There is no one-size-fits-all with this, so I don't want you to try to take this as gospel and try to copy my team or anything like that. It's all about experimentation, also about improving your rotations, optimization, trying to squeeze every single hit that you can 
and trying to align the timing of things like your burns, your breaks, your bogs, in order to actually get the clear. I'm pretty happy I was able to do so, but remember, at a pretty big cost, even if I didn't spend money on this clear, I had to sacrifice my Eleonora, so that's a pretty heavy price to pay. And I think it raises the question in general of Dragalia Lost, at least with this mode, no longer kind of fitting that description of invest in whoever you like, pick your favorite characters, because for content like this, you really need to save and be prepared to summon a lot on the relevant banners to make sure you're getting the units you need. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot harder time. So if you are a pure free-to-play player, this is yet another reminder to be conservative with your Wormite, save it up, pile it up for really good high value banners. Speaking of banners, this particular dragon special, I would strongly encourage you to skip. You only have Nidhogg, Liger, and Cupid on raid up. Liger and Cupid might be relevant if you're trying to take out High Zodiac right away. I suppose Cupid is actually still a very good dragon as a 60% strike dragon with a good skill, but he's one of the three on focus, so I would not encourage you to pull on this when Anniversary is literally at the end of that showcase, and it's likely to be a Gala as well. So that's pretty much all I have to say as far as the review of that banner. I was hoping for something more exciting, but at least they've made us, uh, given us an easy saving decision. But anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching again and again. I hope that you enjoyed watching what I was able to do to clear successfully. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time.